Good happy Wednesday evening. I'm Riley King and welcome to the Riley King Newscast right here on the Riley King Network. We have a lot of news to get to this Wednesday evening, so let's begin. First up, we begin with COVID-19 update. New Hampshire COVID-19 pandemic information, graphs, and case data. Let's take a look at that right now. And here is a look at that right now. There are 8,731 number of people in New Hampshire have tested positive for COVID-19. 7,485,331 number of people in the United States have tested positive. 446 number of deaths from COVID-19 in New Hampshire. 743 number of people have been hospitalized with COVID-19 in New Hampshire. 210-1666 number of deaths from COVID-19 in the United States. And let's take a look at this map of New Hampshire where current cases of COVID-19 are. In Manchester, 66 current cases of COVID-19. And let's take a look at this map of New Hampshire where total cases of COVID-19 are. Manchester, 2149 total cases of COVID-19. And now let's take a look at these three charts here. Let's start with the first chart here. New cases each day in New Hampshire in the purple. Daily new positive COVID-19 cases. In the orange, new hospitalization. And in the red, the death. Let's take a look at this chart here, current cases. In the purple, total current COVID-19 cases, and in the orange, current hospitalization. Let's take a look at this chart here, total cases. In the purple, total positive COVID-19 cases. In the orange, total hospitalization, red death, and blue recovered. Now let's take a look at this chart here, age group of cases, female and male of cases, and risk information. Let's take a look at this chart here, infections, hospitalizations, and deaths. And let's take a look at this chart here, deaths, percent of New Hampshire population, race slash ethnicity of cases, and hospitalization. And a reminder, your common symptoms, fever, lack of smell, cough, difficult breathing, chills, nausea, vomiting, and diarrhea. How it spreads and prevention tips. And be sure to stay with the Riley King Network for the latest of your COVID-19 information. Sununu issues executive order requiring police implement basic training state police body cams. Order implements more than 20 recommendations from Law Enforcement Accountability Commission. Governor Chris Sununu issued an executive order Wednesday moving forward on more than 20 recommendations made by a commission examining accountability and transparency in New Hampshire law enforcement. The order mandates training on impotence, bias, and de-escalation calls for a plan to require body cameras for state police and establish a public integrity unit with the Department of Justice to handle the investigation and prosecution of allegations of criminal conduct by government officials. The recommendation includes in the executive order are among 48 made by the Commission of Law Enforcement Accountability, Community and Transparency, which Sununu established in the wake of a widespread protest at the killing of George Floyd while in police custody in Minnesota. Sununu said in September that he endorsed all the recommendations and would move forward 
with an executive order for many of them. Other recommendations will require legislation or local action. From establishing a public integrity unit within our Department of Justice to mandating body cameras for our state police and overhauling or training standards and curriculum. These recommendations represent the most transformative changes New Hampshire has ever made to our law enforcement system. Sununu said we are moving forward immediately to implementing many of these recommendations and I have confidence that the Department of Safety, the Department of Justice, the Police Standards and Training Council and all others involved state agencies will get it done. The executive order calls for improving training on ethics and when officers have a duty to intervene, background investigations for police recruit candidates must also include examining whether they have demonstrated bias towards a protected group. Prosecutors will also be trained on bias and racial profiling and team focused on community policing and engagement will be created. The order requires training for officers on how to interact with members of the gender non-confirming population, including pronoun inclusion and deaf and hard of hearing community. State law enforcement agencies are also ordered to take steps to require training regarding the mental well-being of an officer, including information on a high rate of post-traumatic distress, depression, and suicide among law enforcement officers. Career Museum awarded more than 700 k to expand program for veterans. Program help veterans deal with issues such as PTSD. Let's take a listen to that video from WMUR News 9. The pandemic has made everything harder, but AARP New Hampshire is fighting to protect Americans 50 plus by giving you the information you need to vote safely at home or in person. Learn more at aarp.org slash nhvotes. That home is the result of more than $700,000, money from the Federal CARES Act. The group Swim With a Mission is taking a leading role to distribute $4 million from that act to combat veteran mental health issues and homelessness. The Courier is one of the recipients. Our therapy really works, and it is sorely needed in our state. Phil Taub of Swim With a Mission says he has seen art make a difference in veterans' lives, particularly those struggling with issues like PTSD. Art is one of those magical things where even if you can't draw or paint or work with clay or sing or dance, you know, just the process of going through that, you know, is a way to, to, to sort of get that out. And the museum says this program fits perfectly with their mission. The Kerr isn't just a museum you walk into and look at art on the walls, but a vital community organization that makes a difference in lives. Part of the money will be used to renovate a section of the museum. We will be creating new classroom spaces in the lower level of the museum. These are flexible spaces that are built for access for veterans and family members. In all, there are 10 organizations that are receiving funds to help veterans and their families. Easter Seals was also given more than a million dollars to support their Veterans Count program. On Tuesday, there's going to be another presentation. Liberty House is getting a check for over a million dollars as part of the effort to end homelessness amongst veterans. In Manchester, Ray Brewer, WMUR News 9. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report.
local movie theater chains get creative to stay afloat during pandemic. COVID concerns, major movie releases delay hurting businesses. Let's take a listen to that video from WMUR News 9. The pandemic has made everything harder, but AARP New Hampshire is fighting to protect Americans 50 plus by giving you the information you need to vote safely at home or in person. Learn more at aarp.org slash nhvotes. It's almost like a nightmare, you know, just you're chasing something that just keeps on moving further and further away. The delay of the new James Bond movie is having a ripple effect on the already struggling movie theater business during the COVID-19 pandemic. Regal Cinema's chain announced they're temporarily closing locations this Thursday because of a lack of big films. Movie theaters in New Hampshire reopen this summer. Cinemagic Theaters says business is off by more than 75%. Cinemagic reopened August 21st. Um, it has been very hard. You know, the losses are huge. I mean, if you want to compare it now to last year, it's night and day. During this time, some theaters are getting creative. Chunky's hosts live comedy, trivia, and is bringing in a local celebrity chef. Cinemagic is showing Halloween-themed movies this month and giving away popcorn to anyone dressed in a costume on Friday nights. Through all of this, the theaters remain optimistic. You know, we just believe in the business, and we, we think, you know, the industry will, will bounce back, and, you know, these movies will come out, and it will get better. We are here, and we are persevering and providing as much entertainment and social engagement as we can. Cinemagic say people have reached out to them with concerns about what sort of protocols they're following. They say they've managed to put customers at ease by explaining the guidelines they're using. In Manchester, Jessica Marin, WMUR News 9. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. And that is it for this evening edition of the Riley King Newscast right here on the Riley King Network. Thank you for watching this evening edition. Have a great rest of your evening. And I'll see you back here tomorrow for another newscast. Good night and goodbye, everyone. I'll have a news report coming up in a little bit.